Hey everybody, I've had a little bit of a late start today. I've already had a few conversations with some people about CARES Act this morning. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to do a local interview with Channel 8 on just trying to get the word out on how businesses can make use of this and just trying to find any way to do that. Um, so I'm going to record just a little bit of value, a little bit of um, details on what the CARES Act does. If you're a business, how you can make use of it. What are the rules? What's the loan forgiveness? There's a lot of bad information floating out there. A lot of imprecise information. A lot of people are going to the SBA website. I mean, a lot of this stuff is wrong. A lot of people are just scrambling to try to get benefit of it. So let's break down actually what this thing does and how you can use it. But first, Simon the Schnauzers is telling you that it's all going to be okay. All right, sun's shining. It's beautiful in Tennessee. Look, I'm telling you, it's going to be okay. He's actually wagging his tail. Okay, so what actually businesses can do for, what does the CARES Act actually do for businesses? So I, first, it's really important to note who's eligible to qualify. So it's not just businesses with payroll. It's not just businesses with employees, full-time, part-time, and independent contractors. It's also self-employed individuals, consultants, freelancers, giggers, who are making no more than $100,000 a year. And the way this whole act works, it goes back to your taxes and proves what your income is. And essentially, you're saying that I do apply, and if they ever find out that you lied or there's fraud, they can come after you. But the whole purpose of this is to increase speed, to get money in people's hands. Okay, so CARES Act provides a loan for these businesses that apply and self-individuals that apply. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, why is it that we need to take out a loan? Like, that's in our best interest. Well, look, these are pro-friendly, pro-business, pro-founder friendly loans. They're no more than 4% interest. They're 10 year maturities. They're non-recourse and there's no personal guarantees or collateral. In other words, if you default, there's no way someone can come after you. This is literally Congress's way of making sure that businesses have liquidity to keep people employed and to stay alive and stay afloat, okay? The next best thing about the CARES Act here is that eight weeks of the loan, if you time it right, eight weeks can be totally forgiven, free money. And that money gets to be spent on payroll costs, on rent, on utilities. You can see this could be extremely important for businesses trying to adapt and make strides and make more revenue. Now, I've been trying to debunk as many myths as possible on this stuff because people are just getting it wrong. People are going to the SBA and trying to get a triple P loan. That is wrong. The triple P loans that was passed on Friday under that, you can get a PPP loan, but you can also get an economic disaster relief loan in relation to COVID. The standards are a little different. You have to really show that your business was directly impacted by COVID, okay? Now, if you can show that, you can get a disaster relief loan from SBA's website directly, and so you can do that. And you can do that while getting a PPP loan under CARES Act to cover your payroll, to cover your rent, your utilities, okay? And the way that that law works, the CARES Act works, it rolls the past SBA loan directly in, so you're paying only one note. Okay, so remember, where do you go? Then it's private institutions. This is an SBA-backed program. You go to your bank, they're setting it up. Okay, another myth is the fact that, okay, you take your monthly payroll costs, you times it by 2.5, and that's how much you can get. That's completely on its face wrong, okay? That's like the MBA math version of a hard scientific problem. You just don't do it that way, okay? So this is actually how the calculations work. So what you can borrow is your average monthly payroll costs times 4.5 is the recovery period between February 15th and June 30th. It's four and a half months times 2.5. That's the maximum you can, you can borrow. So if you, let's just say small numbers, $1,000 a month was your payroll cost, okay? That means 1,000 times 4.5, that's 4,500 times 2.5. That's a little over $10,000 you can take as a PPP loan. Not all of that's forgiven. Only eight weeks of your monthly payroll costs can be forgiven and you have to apply once you get the loan. Last little thing right now for, these, for the series that I'm doing at the moment. Even though if you're self-employed, you can take one of these PPP loans but you can also file for unemployment. And that's really important. That's really sometimes practical. You have to file for employment, unemployment with the state of Tennessee. And if the state of Tennessee 
and I don't know what the status is, but if they contract with the federal government and the Department of Labor, then anyone claiming uh, pandemic unemployment relief can get an additional $600 a week up to. So I, I don't know where the status of Tennessee is and negotiating that with the Department of Labor. But if you are a self-employed gigger, freelancer, you can get a covered loan under the Paycheck Protection uh, Program. And you can also file for unemployment and do that together to make sure that you're good, safe, and happy and healthy. I got a really good question about PPP and EIDL disaster recovery loans. And do you have to get them directly through SBA? I'm here to debunk that. So, okay, PPP loans are directly through your banks and they're propping them up this week. Okay. Disaster recovery loans are directly through SBA and their website. And you can still get a normal SBA loan, but that's directly through SBA. Not all of those are forgivable. Part of PPP loans, eight weeks are going to be forgivable, all right, if you provide the right documentation. Uh, part of the disaster recovery, I don't know this exactly, but I believe part of it is, is uh, uh, forgivable. I'll have to double check that. And the SBA loans generally, SBA, I believe, is doing something with payment deferments so that people don't have to make payments. And if you fall into certain classifications of small business, that they'll actually cover part of your loan. So part of that is going to be covered by SBA.